Yeah, I 100% thought it was also OBS. Um, is anything... Oh, my... Nope. Or my cat... Yeah, okay, yeah, we're good. I'm like, normally my captions are how... I swear to God. OBS, I swear. Don't you... All of you can stop! <laughs> we're good. We're fine now. I think. Thank you, Alex. We're gonna get the game going, because I know it doesn't like to load on original play and that's fine yet yeah, nix is like b come here come here what's this you want to come eat my necklace like you tend to come here she's like very grumpy that i went on camera b she was oh she was keeping me company while we were rebooting things come b can, can i can can i help you <laughs> nope mm. good girl good girl there's the little Bebus. Hi. What are you doing? She's like, no, mom. <laughs> I try. B. Hi. What do you What do you want? I know. Mm. One day she's gonna be a big chunk because she likes her treats, and there's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> right, B? Although you do get quite a bit of zoomies. Which does help. What? You're very cute. Be. Come here. Normally she jumps up here. Okay, come here. What if I stand? B. Come here. Come on. Do her trick. Yeah, there we go. There, you get kitten body. That's that's hi. You silly little thing. She likes the butt scratches so much that she just leans into me. Hi. Oh, is it because I'm being loud? I'm being louder than I think I normally am. What? What? Ma'am, ma'am, you just knocked it. As she knocks things off my desk. B. B. -b it's fine. As I like nearly die. What? Everything is falling. Done. <laughs> but upside, look. I have the shirt. I bought the shirt. The shirt is good. It's a good shirt. We're good. We're fine. We're in the clear. I don't know if my microphone picked that up, but she just did a loud meow. And I'm like, baby, swear to God, we just went through this. Okay. Hello. This is going, this is going great. Nobody tell the group I'm streaming, any of the people I stream for this weekend, that I am an absolute utter failure. <sighs> yeah, no, I don't know what was going on. Everything was fine until I switched work computers and it just decided that at five o'clock, nah, fuck it, we're not gonna function. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank you, all so high. <laughs> Much love, much love. I don't know. Today's been such a weird day. How is everybody doing? How is everybody's days going? My day has been putting out fires, which just feels accurate for everything. I don't even. <laughs> Hello, friends. Hello, darlings. How, how are we all doing? How are we all feeling? Thank you for telling me you're not a failure. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's been a weird day. I don't know. And clearly the cat can only do so much. Ooh, that's exciting. Finished a big project, so I get to relax until Denarius tonight, which is going to be good times. That is at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Over on Huntsman's Hydra. Um, which you sure to be following, because I'm there on Sunday. That's my plug. If you're not following it, you really should be because what's wrong with you? I've lost like everything in my life today. Why? What is this? The problem is when you work from home and you have 20 million things for work and so everything gets lost. What happened? I don't even know. I'll find that later. Not too bad it's been a day for you too, Alex. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Apparently buying your partner is the show mover statue today. <laughs> I mean, cool. I like that. Uh, sounds like a good place to spend your money. Uh, I support this purchase 
I think it's good. It's good for the economy, right? Sure, we'll go with that. Capitalism, I got nothing. That's where that's going today. All right, we're gonna dig back into this game that I love so much, genuinely. Um, I am so, it's been a wild, wild ride. Sorry, I feel like I also dropped something else on the floor, but now I can't find it, but I think I just left it in another room altogether. That's okay. I have lots of water, life is good. Um, so we're hitting level five, the new meta, which will be, I am very, very excited. Oh, hi, BK. <laughs> I mean, if we end up procrastinating for another hour, have you eaten today? Have you eaten today? Has everybody eaten today? Everybody, if you haven't eaten food or had water or taken your meds and you need to do so, please do so, okay? Just saying. I've had, what did I eat today? I ate food. Oh, I ate a lot of snackies. Why was I like that today? You have eaten? How do you? I don't know how much I trust those air quotes. Oh, wait, I have my sweater here. Maybe that's where I left things. Nope. Oh, yeah, there we go. Sorry, there's like, a, I have a fluorite stone that I got gifted over the weekend. And it's become my new, like, I guess kind of like a worry stone sort of thing. But it's become my new fidget thing. Which is why I was looking for it, because this is what I, like, play with. It's got very smooth sides. It's very pretty, too. Um, it's supposed to increase focus, and I don't think it actually does that for me. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a robot response. What is that? Okay, well, make sure you eat food. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Chapter five, level five, let's do this. Okay, we good, we good, we good, we good, we good. Oh yeah, I do like that we start with fight check every single time with Punchy78. What's up everybody, it's your boy Punchy78 here with Fight Shack News. Oh my life. The fighting that's fit to post. Yes sir. We know what you look like without the glasses now, though. Max has come and gone, and months of pro tour events are in the books. We're getting closer and closer to the main event. But all eyes are on tomorrow's charity show match at Pengi Paradise, where everybody's favorite laundromat crew takes on their arch rivals in Team P2W. World famous Pengi Paradise amusement park event co-sponsored by The Palace. Uh, underdogs versus PGW fight for charity. Good, good feels. Oh yeah, no, have I not? Have you not seen that S? It is. That is a throwback and a half. Let me say, it feels also like Microsoft Word art to me. I don't know. I do love how like. Like, it's not my quality. It's literally just this looks like it's been done on a VHS. In their debut match, they schooled Team P2W, putting them on the map. Will they make it two for two, or will Valkyrie... There we go. Okay, we should be back. Not your connection. OBS decided to... That was OBS this time. It just decided to be grumpy with me. I don't know why. But we're here. We're back. We're good. And we're gonna stay that... It's Okay, so what it was... This is on me. This is on me, y'all. I may have started singing a song about OBS before I started streaming today. And I'm pretty sure that just jinxed me entirely. I don't remember what it was. But I was like, I don't know. I was opening OPS, and you know when sometimes you do things, you sing a little song about the thing that you're doing? Maybe that's just me. Um, but yeah. 
Anyways, we're good. We're back. We're fine. OBS, I swear to God. Don't. Don't. I'm gonna fight you. I'm going to fight you. It threatens. It keeps threatening me. Okay, OBS, I love you. I adore you. Please love me. I'm just gonna put that out into the universe. You love me and you want to work well for me. I... I don't know why my brain always thinks with music. I'm not musically inclined whatsoever. It's just how my brain get works. And they sing the praises of the wee baby, she could be good. <laughs> Lady of floofiness. I, I will get like a tune or something like that stuck in my head. Um, and then I started like, I, I will like make up new lyrics. OBS, OBS, friendly neighborhood OBS. It loves me. I love it. I'm staring at these blinking lights. Watch out. OBS, please work for me. <laughs> See that? I think that's actually similar to what I was singing. Maybe if I don't like call it out, maybe get spooked when I talk about it. We'll stop. Everybody can be calm. Nobody's going to talk about it anymore. We're going to move on. Anyways. Oh, goodness. I do sing lots of songs about my cat, though. I really do. And she's got a lot of weird nicknames at this point. It all comes down to this, friends. There we go. Be sure to tune into the Fight Shack stream tomorrow morning. Like, share, subscribe, punch the bell, and get ready. Yeah, and like, watch Pot Never Boils and stuff like that. Are my pixel alerts not coming up? There's some stuff that's disconnected today. I don't know. What is even going on today? It's fine. It's fine. It's very weird, but it's fine. All right, all right. We're going into a charity tournament. And I am mildly concerned that this is where it all goes down. Okay, it's the distant future year, 20 something or other, and we are about to enter the crucible of fate. These are the moments that break lesser competitors. High, stre high stress combat scenarios, the kind that melt willpower like candle under a blowtorch. Where we are now on this war torn battleground, there is only the absolute focus of a soldier. Victor or death, there are no other options. Ooh, look at all those adorable penguins. Yes, very serious battleground here. Thanks, Grace. My life, my goodness. Oh my, I don't even. Balloons everywhere. Music in the streets and children laughing and people in colorful costumes dancing and singing. I just love Pinky Paradise. It's the silliest place on earth. Trademark all rights reserved. <laughs> Trademark all rights reserved! I love that. Oh my goodness. I love this music still so much. Okay, so maybe it's not quite as intense as predicted. Nice? Just nice? If you aren't having the funnest time of your life at Pinky Paradise, you're probably dead. It's Joy Incarnate. Wow, calling it like it is, Grace, I see. Yeah, like I said, it's nice. Well, she wasn't wrong. This place is kind of nice. Pinky Paradise. I've never actually been here before, despite it being the most popular amusement park in the world. Well, the best one, which wasn't Mouse Base. <laughs> There's so many side comments to Disney. It's so fun. Thrill rides, kitty rides, educational rides, rides upon rides, as well as food and drink from the four corners of the globe. Gotta take Grace to the carnival in, Re carnival in Rio. Yeah. I think Grace needs to get out more. That's all I'm understanding here. Hell yeah. You're never too old to eat a metric ton of cotton candy and go on high-speed thrill rides. I'm gonna eat and eat some more and puke some more. Oh, jeez. Zapper, that's not healthy, baby. Or you could just ride the gentle rides that don't make you lose your lunch. I'm with rap on this one. Hey, now, I'm a professional theme park crasher, and professionals have a standard. Greasy food and sunscreen action go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. We have a charity show match tomorrow, remember? 
Maybe you cannot get violently ill before showtime. Just like a small recommendation. I mean, I'm not anybody like your manager or anything at all. Penguin's the second best creature to Shikin. Yeah, no, it's pretty adorbs. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of love this. Look at them. Look at those guys. They're so cute. I promise nothing. Zapper, I now, swear. Let us relish in this pre-packaged unit of delight. Served up by Pengi's highly litigious corporate masters. Smile, laugh, thrill, chill. Look, listen, kneel, pray. Yeah, it's probably for the best if you don't. I feel like that's the one thing. Very, like, theme parks aren't always the best with food. Apparently, there are some, like, ones that do it pretty well. Um, I've watched some videos of, like, the food at Knott's Berry Farm, I think, in California. And it they actually put a focus on the food. Some Disney parks are actually pretty good. But it really depends on which ones you're at and which ones you get, like, where you're going and where you're eating at. Um... But let me tell you, do not ever bother with Canada's Wonderland, let me say. Nor its food. God. Hmm. I wonder what shenanigans I could get up to in the middle of a media empire's personal playpen. Loxley! Loxley, you're just gonna keep causing trouble. Some, yes, but that, but those that make it a highlight, but they're the exception out of the rule. 100%. Knott's Berry Farm is good. Went there a ton as a kid. Oh, that's so cool. Also, what the heck? My, yeah, so my Pixel Chat Alerts is not working, apparently. I'm going to figure that out. That's a later Parker problem, though. I'm going to, once again, blame they who shall not be named. Because I wish not to infer the wrath at all. We're in a good spot now. Um, not that I'm, I'm not talking about anything in particular or any program or software or anything. It's fine. No, no shenanigans. We're here for a ding dang charity event, people. Best behavior. you are. I'll love yous. Or else. So I've realized today I put a lot of threats out there with very little intention of follow up or very little idea of an actual follow up. Like, I had a conversation with somebody today and discussing um, a conversation we have to have tomorrow, basically promoting somebody internally. And I basically point blank said, I'm like, if they don't accept this, I swear to God, I know where they live. And then I realized I didn't have the rest of that threat. It's a very empty threat. I know where they live, mostly because they make me baked goods one time. And so I went there to pick it up and it was delicious. And then I stayed for an hour and we chatted, um, which was so much fun. Um, but like that would be what it is. I'm not the first person to speak of similar problems across Twitch. Okay, well, that's reassuring and good to know. Yeah, I was visiting a friend's stream last night, and they were having 20 million OBS problems, too. Um, although we did figure out it was due to them also downloading something at the same time. Um, I just, I don't know. OBS gods are a bleach. I'm going with that. I got nothing. Um, I was saying something. Oh, I make empty threats constantly. Yes, that is pretty much me. I don't know why. Half the time if I'm like, I will show up on your doorstep and my friends are like, you realize, don't threaten me with a good time. That sounds like fun because we can get into shenanigans. And I'm like, fair point. Also, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. There we go. There's the Huntsman's Hydra link. If you haven't been following, go follow. I'm there on Sunday, but they've got a fun, got a fun show tonight too. So go follow. Go check it out. But mine is on Sunday, and mine is going to be really, real good times. Real good times, I think. So, <laughs> I'm excited, to say the least. I'm so glad my bots do work for me. Okay, look, I know we're all riding high on our undefeated streak. We've been racking up plenty of Pro Tour points to qualify for the main event. Thank God, because I haven't actually been playing anything. So, we're winners through and through! And this little mini vacation is well deserved. Bolded words, man. They're getting to me. So yeah, go. Have fun. But also keep in mind we're taking on Team Play to win tomorrow. The streak must continue. You mean we have to win for our charity, right? That's really why we're here. Right, charity. I mean, yeah, we're here to do good work for charity. I am sounding like such an asshole. It needs to stop. You seem rather fixated, Rogue. As you say, we're riding high, yes? And if we do lose tomorrow, it won't affect our qualification points. 
starting to grow concerned. Tell me, is your hand still sore? Shit, shit, shit. Loxley's got us. He's got our number, folks. He's got our- he's got us figured out. Instinctively, I hide my hand behind my head. I'm fine, Loxley. Chill. Sounds fake, but okay. It's fine. Everything is fine. We're winners. We won't literally- we have literally not lost a single major fight. We are losing this fight. I am fairly certain all of this preamble is because we're going to be forced to lose this one. Beaten team, beaten team PGW before and we'll beat them again. There are absolutely no cause for alarm. Just as long as we stay focused, we'll pull through just fine. Okay, we've got all night and all day to come up with some fun in pink paradise. Silliest place on earth. Trademark all reserved. All rights reserved. So go have a blast and get plenty of rest and be ready for tomorrow's event. And seven, let's do this. With good cheer and smiles all around, the group breaks up, running all around the park to have some fun. I move to join them when a buzzing from my phone grabs my attention. Iris, something up? Computing. I wanted you to know that I've been researching Pengi Paradise to optimize the fun you'll be having today. That's helpful. I don't think I need to worry about optimizing fun, though. Ah, uh, but my calculations, I have come to an intriguing conclusion. Is it the fact that I am being slowly and surely possessed by Polybius and my ego? Pengi Par- Fuck. You're gonna make me make a decision! Railroading into a fail for story reasons is irritating. It can be. I just- I feel like that's what it's alluding to. If it's not this one, it's gonna be another one. Um... Not even to railroad, but to, like, cause a problem to call- Because I we're at chapter 5. I'm assuming this is going to be similar to the first game, where there's probably 8 chapters. This isn't quite the beach episode, but it's probably very similar. Actually, no, this might be the beach episode. Because after- Because the beach episode came immediately after us having that really successful- Well, no, not really successful launch. Oh no, it wasn't the launch. No, it was after the very successful event that we held at our first arcade. Um, and so that's what I'm thinking. This is our beach episode, which then story no, story beats dictate that like the end of this will be something. Actually, the end of this will be romance. Next session, next episode is so six will be where it goes to hell in a handbasket. Um, so this one might be fine still, but they might- it depends on what they're doing for story beats. We'll see. Anyways. D uh, breaking down the narrative aside. What? Sure, day by day, it's rides and snacks and kitties constantly underfoot, but by night, this place is alive with romance. God damn it, do I have to make a decision today, though? Did you miss the part that I'm a Libra? Did we miss this? Because that would in- that would- very clearly indicate that I'm incapable of really making decisions, okay? Did you know that there are over 5,000 proposals at Pengi Paradise a year? And 2,000 of them are at the famous Le Penguin restaurant alone. Not to mention the special honeymoon package, which you can buy starting as low as $99, which includes a private candle at dinner, personalized jewelry, and your name in fireworks. That's a lot for 99 bucks. Does it include alcohol? <laughs> Y'all, how cute. Uh, Iris, I'm not rushing into marriage while I'm here. Oh, I wasn't trying to insinuate that. I'm just saying that Pengi Paradise really brings out the love. I mean, it's been known to happen, okay? I do occasionally leave all... Oh, the clear option is whoever loves cats the most. You're not wrong. I just... I just... I'm not good at making decisions, okay? I don't want to. Remember when you first installed me and we talked about my ability to help you find a perfect partner? Not just for, for games, but for love and companionship. I recall this conversation, yes. You're close with your team and feelings are running high. Tonight is the perfect night to bring that slow burn to a climax. What about a slower burn? Iris, hear me out. What if we go real slow burn? Real slow. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good at this. Seriously? Seriously, I wouldn't joke about something like this. Love blooms differently for so many. And no matter your choices and your path, I support you. What do you think? Are you ready? <laughs> Are we ready? Are you ready, kids? I, I, Captain. We're saving. 
Because this feels like decision time. She's not wrong. Actually, if I want this, the perfect opportunity lies before me. Granted, we're also less than 24 hours away from one of the biggest matches of our... It's not the biggest match of our career. We need to calm down. It's Moto Truth. How do I feel about this? Okay, we're going with the fucking... God, y'all. Y'all. Friends, family, lovers, enemies, listen. Um, I'm really bad at this. We know this already. One step ahead of you, Iris. I don't have anybody planned. I'm not, okay, I'm, but I'm not sure whom to ask out. I think I have good chemistry with several of them. I'm going to go with that answer. This feels too weird. Maybe I'll, I'm better off just staying friends with it. Nope, we're not, st that, that is the coward's way out. Not actually, that is, a very, that is a very sensible way out. I respect anybody who chooses that. However, this is gonna be me right now. <coughs> I'm actually not sure whom to ask out on a date yet or even if I'll make the attempt. I get along great with a lot of them, you know? And Okay, I think there's something brewing there between us, but I'm not sure. Ah, now the ball is in Iris's court. Allow my data to bolster your confidence in courtship. You're doing what now, Iris? Here's months of emotional data now properly analyzed. Cowardice is always the best option. You know what? You're not entirely wrong about this either. I told you, this is my new fidget toy. I don't, it's not even a toy, it's a stone. But anyways. You've boiled my entire life down to a series of integers and it's beautiful, really? Now, now, remember, the numbers exist because you choose to spend time with these people. You still have free will as any sentient being deserves. You can use these integers to reflect on your thoughts and feelings, but definitely put the emphasis on your own empathy, okay? Side note, I do love that we are pretty high on everybody. And listen, I'm like, do I, I really want to go with Goth Girlfriend? But I think I got, I really want to, the problem is, I think I figure out the full Polybia storyline if I go with Loxley. But are we probably going to come back to exactly this point and choose a different person and finish out the game? Oh my god, yes. This is why there's a skip button. Because eventually we'll be able to utilize that. I know, I love the Goth Girlfriend. Do not get me wrong. Cowardice is acceptable for everyone except me. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I just said, wasn't it? Okay, but hear me out. I know, trust, like, I owe, here's the thing. Goth girlfriend or literal Robin Hood. Here, the thing is, I'm a sucker for long hair, okay? I think that's my weakness here. <laughs> And for trouble, and Loxley's a lot of that in an accent. Jesus Christ. Loxley hits a lot of the I'm a sucker for things, although I am also a sucker for goth girlfriends, and thus Lee Jinx. I'm also a sucker for the sad boys, thus <laughs> Domino. I am also a sucker for absolutely gorgeous and stunning they thems, hence Rhapsody. I am just a sucker for most of these people. Okay? We've been through this problem they won't let me ha date fix it by dating all of them so one step at a time here folks right right now that you've seen the data are any of i'm gonna go make my goth girlfriend i'm gonna sign on dinner go live the life i should be leading <laughs> okay this is actually where we're saving this is 100 the beach episode though guys Friends. Sorry, I'm trying to stop saying guys. I don't want to use that anymore. Um, so I'm trying to correct myself. I roll a d6. I could. I think I am gonna- I think I know what I'm going with on this first run just because it's already so strong. Um, but I think what we'll end up doing, especially for this beach episode, so to speak, will probably play out- we'll pro probably play it out a few times. Um, purely out of curiosity. Pretty much, yeah. Now that you've seen the data, are any of them really jumping up the spreadsheet and saying, love me to you? All of them. All of them, Iris. What part of this have you missed? God damn it. You're very rude. This game is rude. This game made me choose things today. I was not, I mean, was I prepared to choose things? I'm never prepared to choose things. How we've gotten used to me at all. Um. I don't, I don't choose things. We're going with Loxley on this one now. Thank God I saved. 
Loxley, Loxley's my knight in shining armor, or er, shining hoodie. Okay, it literally doesn't shine, but you get the idea. Hooray! I'm so glad you found someone special to, special to you. I don't want you to feel locked in. Okay. You mean I could have actually not chosen? Iris. Iris, you're a bully. Iris, why are you so mean to me? You change your mind between now and tonight. Follow your heart. Keep my heart open to go with whoever feels right. Uh. Yes, whatever makes you happiest. Okay, I think you're all set. Have fun at Pengy Paradise. I'll have more data for you tonight. Iris offline. Iris, you are... <laughs> Listen! I am very offended that she made me choose right now, okay? There's a very visceral reaction to this. Oh, my life. Focus on why I'm here. Having some fun at Pengy Paradise. I could go hit a ride all by my lonesome, but when but screaming down a roller coaster is more fun when it's not just you holding on for dear life. So instead, I think I'll track down one of my friends and take along for a bit, but who first? Screw you, cupcake. I'm not gonna see you. I'm gonna go with everybody else because I care about them. But also I want to maintain those relationships. Okay, let's go with my Oh, hold up, hold up. Okay. Rhapsody and Zapper are getting some yummy treats. Smart life plan. Loxley and Domino are examining an edutainment exhibit. Oh, God, help us. Oh, <gasps> Mr. Moopy's magic shop. I miss Mr. Moopy. Okay. We're going to see everybody, but let's start with these boys. Sinking your respite from the warming temperatures. Why do we dress for Pengi Paradise like it's still winter in this city? I find Domino and Loxley enjoying the indoor air conditioning. What's up, boys? Hmm. Matsushita Collective is proud to present a history of refrigeration. Color me pleasantly surprised. Well, that's mighty nice of them educating us on the many wonders of modern food preservation. Indeed, I'm sure it's merely a coincidence that all these lovely fridges on display are made by the Matsushita Collective. Or that Matsushita owns the Pengi branding, or that they have a vested interest in advertising their kitchen wares to passing amusement park patrons. Sure enough, this building is packed with giant white boxes, each large enough to topple and crush a human being. That's not scary whatsoever. Helpful placards and screens showing Pengi and extolling the virtues of refrigeration detail the decades of ice makers, crisper trays, and more delights. Did I miss something? Did we walk into an appliance store? Hey, old friend! Oh, my friend, a pleasure to see you. You're merely basking in the superior knowledge of a corporate-sponsored education. Come join us, join us, one of us. I know Pengi's found its way into arcade games, anime, comic books, neck massage. <laughs> neck massage wands? See what you're talking about there. And. Trapper Keepers TM. I have questions. But refrigerators? Seriously? Quite serious, I'm afraid. Pengi is the colorful mask that the corporation wears to indoctrinate children into their capitalistic ideals. Please tell me you aren't planning to, like, firebomb the place. You said to be on our best behavior, so no. We're not going to take off and nuke the site from orbit. Even if it's the only way to be sure. Mostly I wanted to get indoors because I'm all sweaty and it's all and it's crap out there. Yeah, I really wish I had packed lighter. Why are we all wearing overcoats? This feels like a poor life choice. Our fashion choices are to be questioned. The chill of the city is frozen in the very marrow of our bones, it seems. It drives our fashion impulses. So we must seek respite underneath the cooling shade of our penguin overlord. But oh, this model built has a built-in ice cream maker! Perhaps we should casually buy a 300 pound lump of steel and bring it home with us. Might placate Zapper's sweet tooth at least for an hour or two. Life is a series of poor choices, just roll with it. You're not wrong. You're not wrong in the slightest. You okay with us dropping one of these in our carry on luggage? Do we fly here? Let's just stuff it down our pants and walk it walk in on the metal, on the plane. Might sell the metal detector though. Here to fudge, two of them even. We can 
Overhead luggage? I'm not giving it I'm not giving up my bin space for anyone. I'll just jam one of these things down my trousers and walk it home. In fact, you distract the guards, I'll swipe one right now. I think we can go for the Chillax 3000, the Cold Master Plus. Which grifter routine should we do? Get help! <laughs> Sorry, I love that get help is there. I love get help. The Dutch reversal, second fiddle on the left. Oh my god, these are good. I love. I'm a fan of the full frontal Italian rotary engine. I'm sorry, what? I know, get help, just like that kills me and I love it so much. Whereas I'm a PC gamer, so I say we go with look behind you, a three-headed monkey. As amusing as these implausible heist tactics may be, we can skip on Grand Theft Appliance for now. <laughs> GTA. We're doing it, we're not doing get help, we're doing get help. But good to know you'd steal a refrigerator for my heart. <laughs> it gets a little creepy, but I kind of love it. <laughs> we all are going to die when climate change melts the ice caps, aren't we? Domino's hollow laughter echoes throughout the edutainment hall, rattling off the steel obelisks around us. Neither Loxley or I nor I laugh. A mother of two peers are away, then hurriedly hustles her children deeper into the exhibit, away from that creepy laugh. <laughs> um... I've gotten done it again, haven't I? So, sorry. An unpleasant business, this. No worries, my friend. You have every right to be concerned about such things. And if you can't find laughter in the darkest hour, well, you'll have a terrible evening indeed. I find your ability to mock such doom inspiring, Domino. So do I. If I could have both the boys, I would do like in a heart. It'd be just so much fun. So many shenanigans. We would so many grifter heists. It'd be great. Okay, but it's still doom, 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 doom. doom, doom. How do you do it, Loxley? Do what, my friend? How do you stay alert and aware of all the world's problems without feeling completely overwhelmed by them? I have literally been asked that at work before and I don't have a good answer. I can name 11 ways we're fucked and that's just off the top of my head. Somehow you keep informed on all the issues without that despair settling in like a fallout after a nuclear de detonation. Ah, I have a simple solution to be honest. I fight. In a matter in matters smaller lodge, I fight back against the doom. Research, verification, signal boosting, activism, protest. I listen to others fighting, spread the truth, and I act upon it. Those who profit from despair want you to feel like there's no use in fighting. They encourage complacency. That's just the way it is, they say. I shall rise to this challenge. But I stare them in the eye, those low men of greed and pride, and say no. I will not give up hope. I will not stop fighting. Never mind. This is why I'm. This, this is why we're playing through his. I'm sorry. That and his hair is stunning. Uh, I'm but one man, yes. I can make no great impact alone. But an impact I shall make regardless, and together we can move mountains. And say, Rogue, how do you cope with the modern age of 20 something? Perhaps we can lend our dear do friend Domino some strategies. That's a pretty big question, Loxley. It need not be a big answer. Speak from your heart, simple and direct. How do you endure? It's a good question. I like that eat the rich is 100% that option there. And I love it. I... I'm gonna go through kindness and understanding. Um, although eat the rich is such a good option. I choose kindness. I choose to help my friends with their troubles and I work to make this world a better place for all of us. With understanding and communication, we can do anything. I know it sounds trite, even saccharine, but that's what I believe sincerely. I'll fight, but in my own way and for the ones I love. Indeed, never lose sight of what matters most, those bonds of friendship and love forged in battle, tested in fire and during all our days. I'm proud to know you. You genuinely believe this, don't you? Both of you. Well, okay then. Maybe I can learn to believe it too. Thanks, Rogue. Good words to keep in mind. I believe we've both cooled down enough and heated up by this point, so a net of zero. I have nothing further to gain from remaining here. Besides, it's getting rather warm in here since Ro- I'm sorry! Excuse? I believe I should locate ice cream next. Are you- so here's the thing, here's the thing. I've realized this, I thought about this last night. I also still as a Libra, as we've all learned about me. 
I flirt with everybody. However, I have no idea what to do when I'm flirted back with. I do not know how to handle that. So this is, I'm like, sorry, what? Yeah, okay, I'm still hot and bothered and crap too. Not what I think Loxley was hitting at. All those in favor of rejoining the others for mirth and frolic in the silliest place on earth. Try and mark all rights reserved. Aye. Seconded. Motion moved and carried. Sorry, I dove into Robert's rules. I have an issue. I have many issues. Who am I kidding? Departing the nexus of refrigeration, I step back into the warm breezes of Panky Paradise to find my fun. No matter the troubles of this world, no matter the dumpster fire of 20-something or other, I'm here with my friends, and I'm determined to enjoy that time together. Let's go with these two. Great, so I just realized I was so eager to start the day that I and that I forgot to eat anything resembling breakfast. And now my stomach is being very vocal about it. Wasn't Zapper saying something about stuffing her face with food until she hurls? Should find her. Zapper could be the key to unlocking my hunger. Or at least solving that. In more ways than one. That is awfully thirsty of me. I... Go eat something! It didn't sound like you ate anything really today. I haven't, and I figured that out already, so. My goodness. Sorry, welcome to my streams where I just strongly encourage people to go eat. Luckily, she hasn't strayed far and is very easy to spot. The head of red hair, a head of red hair is bouncing around and... Okay, okay, that was good, at least. That's good. I ate fruit. I had some crackers. I had... These, like, dried edamame things, which are really yummy. Oh, I had leftover apple crisp for breakfast. It was good. It's been very snacky stuff today. Luckily, she hasn't... Oh, yeah. A head of red hair is bouncing around in front of a Bavarian-themed food cart. Perhaps has also joined the food hunt, but it looks like they're still concerned about Zappers overstuffing her gastrointestinal tract. I wander my way over to them, excited about the chance to eat. Hey there! Although my stomach growling announces me louder than my own voice ever could. Oh, wow, someone's hangry as fuck today, huh? And here I thought I was a designated foodie for this run. You want me to bail you out and order something? Bavarian. I know, right? I wouldn't say no to chowing down, no. What's on the offer? Oh, yeah. Penguin-shaped pretzels. Don't ask me how they make them that way, though. I'm sorry. I wish to see this. Fair. If Zap's buying, I'll take one, too. They do look quite tasty and penguiny. I've never eaten anything in the shape of a penguin. I'm always wanting to elevate my palate. Rhapsody, you are far too fancy for us. We step up to the cart. It's classically decorated with all things Bavarian. Blue and white checkered with diamond print. Oktoberfest fonts. Complete with a picture of Pengi wearing lederhosen. Perfect. So, all that's happened now. She has my money and has bought her statue. Now to convince her that dumplings... Dumplings are the best dinner idea. Ooh. Maybe I'll have dumplings for dinner tonight. I've decided I'm not going to cook, so... Dumplings are a very good idea. Hmm. While the style is a little... little uh, while the style is a little on the nose, the smell of freshly baked salty pretzel engulfs us. My mouth waters as I lick my lips hungrily. Doesn't take long for us to purchase our food and find us a place to snack down. I love dumplings so much. So, this is supposed to be a penguin? Look down at my pretzel, but I can't see any semblance to a semi-aquatic birds and the mass of twisted dough and salt. Can't you see its little beak and its rotund penguin body? It's so cute. I could just gobble it up. I think that's the intention. Which is exactly what Zapper proceeds to do. No thanks. I get that we're at Panky Paradise, but just because it's on brand doesn't actually make it taste better. Are you sure? Does every treat they make have to be penguin shaped? That's the name of the game, Rap. It's called Panky's Paradise Potluck Procurements for a reason. That is quite the title. The what to what now? It's a basic stamp card and prize system. By spending a ridiculous amount at the park, you are rewarded with a cheap prize that doesn't amount to the actual amount you spent collecting those stamps. Way to overthink it, Raph. Sounds like you've been spending way too much time listening to Loxley's soapbox rants. This isn't about value, it's about stuffing your face full of yummy treats and getting a sweet effing collectible. Okay, so what do you get and how do you get it? Simple enough, travel around the park, I'll order all the spang issue I was gonna call it spangy, which is special pengi. But it didn't come out that way. 
Get a food, get a stamp, get another food, get another stamp, get all the stamps, and you get a rare Pangby lunchbox. And it's a true collector's item. You can only get that lunchbox here at the park. <laughs> well, okay, I guess you could buy it online for several hundred dollars instead. I actually love Zapper. I'm not gonna lie. She's fun. Cheaters. I'm gonna earn that damn lunchbox. Not that many people actually legit complete the whole challenge, but I'm not backing down now. It will be mine. That's not what you'll be saying when you're hunkered over a toilet later. <laughs> At least my food quest has a reward. Eating delicious food is its own reward, my friend. Oh, Rhapsody, I didn't realize you were into the food, too. I thought you were babysitting Zap. Nah, I'm here for something truly rare. Penguin eggs. I'm sorry, what? They serve what here? Like for raising your own penguin brood or for eating? Is that legal? I have questions. So do I. Obviously, it's for eating, but I don't think the Pangy Corporation will allow you to eat any endangered species. Unless they thought they could get away with it. Too true, but regardless, you can actually try penguin eggs here. It's the only other place I know that serves them. The only other place that I know that serves them is Antarctica. OBS. OBS, I thought we had come to an agreement. Okay, there we go. Sorry. I. We were doing so good. We were doing so well. Foie gras could be something that's certainly that's that's meat and awful half the time. Like awful. Not awful, awful. I'm saying it wrong. Um I forgot last I checked anyways. So it wouldn't necessarily be eggs, it's normally the like intestines and stuff like that, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't know, it's been a hot minute. I don't normally eat foie gras or cook with it. I just know it's delicacy. Anyways, unless Rogue can get us a match out that way, I'm afraid this is the next best thing. Speaking of, Rogue, what entices your hunger? Ugh. I'm talking about the food. Sure you were. Sure you were. The all of these people are flirting a lot more with me, and like we, I've already been over, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to have that reciprocated. <laughs> I just get very awkward. What do you want to do while you're with us? Let me think. Can I do both the eating challenge and try penguin eggs? Okay, we're gonna go with, see your, I swear, OBS, I turned away for two seconds. You get best, get your sheet together. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm choosing one, one that I think favors one of the characters and then the next decision I change something that favors the other one. I'm trying to balance these people. Zapper has needs and we're here to help with it. Yeah, I mean. Okay. I'll pass on the challenge, but as for the eggs, if it's edible, I'll eat it. I'm all about trying adventurous foods if we can't get them elsewhere. Think of this as a one-time experience that we can have. We only get this one life, so might as well try for some new things. Experiment. We can find the eggs at the Pengi Crepery stall. I think they make they make a crepe with it. And it's also where Zap can get her next stamp for the potluck procurement. It's right down the road. Then what are we still doing here? We've got crepes to eat. We hurriedly finish up our misshapen penguin pretzels and traverse across the park to the peng Pengi Crepery. This place really stands out. It's a bigger food stall than the rest with a much longer line. You can easily tell it's a park favorite. Like all the other carts though, it's heavily decorated in the food's place of origin, France. This is just Epcot. That's what this is right now. Um, the whole park's an international gathering of food stuff. And don't get me, like, I, I say that, I love, love Epcot. I do not love that the program that shall not be named keeps being messy though today. I don't know what's wrong. But I swear, I will find an empty thread. <laughs> I but genuinely love Epcot, love the World Showcase, love all the food. It is literally my favorite thing, although it's not the most accurate food half the time. Zapper rolls up to the menu with pictures and begins going down the options. All of them have cute little signs on them with adorably matching names. It's just so grumpy today. It's very grumpy. And I don't know what it is. I'll do a full, I'll make sure I need to, I'll see if I need to update and reboot. Um, Cause it could be something as simple as that. Or at least that's what I assume. I could be wrong though. 
You got that right. What about you? Which one are you getting? Both look delicious, but in the end, I choose. Chris, cute and sweet Cryptopangi. I don't know which one Zapper is choosing. I stopped paying attention. Look in the picture, makes me smile from ear to ear. It's a crepe filled with a mix of white chocolate and dark chocolate ganache, decorated with a penguin shaped chocolate, whipped cream, cherries, and candied orange peel. It's so cute! It's the crepe to Pengi for me. Get our food and enjoy it, mostly in silence, just experiencing the combination of flavors in our mouths. It's good to see a celebration of the different types of food from all over the world. Food brings everyone together. No matter where you're from, everybody eats, right? Less tacky, more eaty. We all share a friendly laugh and relish in our treats. With a stop on Zapper's challenge tour completed, we followed her a few more stops. No way in heck can I keep up with Zapper's bottomless stomach. I'm not trying to match her on this challenge road was not trying to match her on this challenge road was the right move. But I'm happy to hang around with Ryan while she blitzes her way through the food stalls all the same. The last stop complete, Zapper holds up her fully stamped cards with a burst of pride. Last step, no indigestion yet. Challenge complete. Zapper returns, runs back to the stall, shows off her finished card. In return, the food cart worker hands her over a cute little retro-looking Pengi lunchbox. Complete, Pengi lunchbox complete with thermos. It's really sweet. Nice work, Zap. Can't believe you're able to eat all those foods in one run. I'm impressed. I swear, what is going on with this? Oh, I'm so sorry for how choppy today is, y'all. I never say no to a challenge. But now that I actually have it, Zapper hands over the lunchbox to me. Here, all yours. Maybe you earned this. Nah. I don't really need a lunchbox. It's not the trophy, it's the title. Being one of the few who legit completed the challenge, that's my reward. I'm at a loss for words. You should keep it. We can put it in the apartment when we get home. It'll be a nice keepsake after we play tomorrow. Oh, crap. You're right. We've only got one full day in the park. Shit. I have so many rides still to run. Rogue Rhapsody, see you both later. It's time to put my stomach to the real test. Look out, world. Here comes Zapper. Zapper bows to us and storms off. Maybe I should go make sure Zap doesn't eat anymore for her own safety. I nod in agreement and Rhapsody chases after Zapper, leaving me alone. With my tummy full and a brand new old looking lunchbox nestled in my arms, I should see what everybody else is getting up to. There's still so much to do. Okay, these two. Sorry, cupcake. Oh, come on. OBS, OBS. Friendly neighborhood, OBS. Should love me very much. I'd appreciate it if it stopped doing all of this very weird stuff. Anyways. Song worked the last time, okay? It's a big park, but I've got a pretty good idea of where Grace will be, considering it's all she was talking about all the way down here. Pretty sure nobody on our flight will forget it either, given the intensity of her gleeful ramblings. And yep, there we go. I uh, spot Jinx's rented three-wheeled mobility scooter parked right outside Grace's destination of choice. Moopy's magic, Mr. Moopy's Magic Shop, where she's busy dropping the wealth of a small nation onto enchanted coffers of this magical world of consumerism. Woohoo! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's a real Mr. Moopy wizard hat! Look at the stitching, the sheen of the felt, the way it even has the tiny notch from the Shadow King nearly cut off his head in Mr. Moopy's Misadventure in Moonlight. At the risk of immediately being forced to binge three seasons of the anime, I haven't seen that one. What?! Oh, we need to fix that the instant we get home, or... Yes, uh, yep, that's what I feared would happen. I wander past excited children wearing nearly identical hats, making my way into the magical shop. Grace is checking out the wide array of wands on offer, while Jinx sort of loiters, hoping this experience will be swiftly over. But, that doesn't seem likely. So, moopy, huh? Hey, Rogue, look, look, they've got wands from all 12 of major guilds and even 36 minor ones. There's 48 of those things? Seriously? I thought there were like six or seven at most. Oh crap, here we go. Um, what? You don't know all of the guilds? But that's like the core foundation of the entire show. I mean, surely you've heard of a few, right? I think so. 
I mean, it's hard not to have a passing knowledge of Moopy ever since that anime went big. Well, the Pengi brand is so pervasive worldwide, it's like a background radiation. The Mo Mr. Moopy brand has been only been hot for five years. Interesting. We knew that he did this, but I love the reference. Also, his name is Percy. We're good. Ever since the 30 year, okay, so that that was five years ago, which actually finally gives us a real timeline of when this, how later, much later this game is. Ever since the 30 year world record was toppled by Percy Sinclair, the media took an interest in that ni old 1980s arcade game. Okay, so that was five years ago. Good to know. Including an anime company owned by Pengi's corporate masters. Smelling money, they developed a hot run of animated adventures about Mr. Moopy and his wizard friends doing the battle with monsters and undead across the world. Conveniently, though, they sell a variety of costume pieces for the guild, so you can cosplay the one you most identify with. Me, I'm a total Sphinx Adele because I'm so very clever and I love puzzles. See? Because Sphinx, that's what Sphinxes do. Yeah, I figured that much. I'd say I'm a lot like Miss Stella, the young Sphinx Adele prodigy. She's got a big heart. Even it sometimes gets lost along the way. What would Guild Jinx would be in? This feels like we're combining Harry Potter here. None, because magic isn't real. Aww. Oh, come on. It's fun to make believe. I bet you'd be an ind Indominus. Because of your iron will. You stand true and strong against those who would hurt your friends. Can't argue that. So, Rogue, which guild are you in? It's a big decision. Your guild says so much about you, what you believe in. What is it? What is it? What is it? What wand will you accept, oh great wizard? I only remember a handful of the guilds, so she... But she just looks so excited about my answer that I should probably give it my best. Heart right, love and cherish my friends above all else. Malifador, I shall rule the world. We're gonna go with the nice and neat, sweet one. Heart right, totally. They're the wizards who cherish their friends, right? Forsaking absolute power in favor of kindness and understanding. Yeah, I'm a heart right. It's where my bubble, where, where's my, bu where is my heart on a stick? I want to summon love, love bubbles or something. Ooh, good call, good call. I may be sick. You and me both, don't worry. Quickly, Grace thrusts a rainbow-hued wand into my hand with a sparkling heart-shaped gem on the end. That's wonderful. Remain true to your feelings, fellow heart right. Your love will steer you true. Fellow heart right, but I thought you were a sphinx Adele. My OC is in two guilds because she's the chosen one and everybody loves her. It's true, I've seen the fanfic. So much fanfic, the horror. Oh, look, look! With tender care, Grace extends an adorable wide-brimmed black hat from the racks and racks of cosplay souvenirs. Wow. Jinx, quick, quick, put this on. Not happening. But you look so cute in this Raven Scry Guild hat. Don't do cute. Of course you do cute. I mean, you have a cute cat and you do, and you post cute pictures of her to your face wall all the time. Minx is not cute. Minx is a classy lady and so am I. Classy, you wear sweatpants around the house all the time. Classy sweatpants, thank you. I'm with Jinx on this one. I wear classy leggings all the time, including right now. Please don't give me the wibbly wobbly eyes. I am immune. Rogue, don't you think this hat just screams, Jinx? Uh, why are you bringing me into this? This is this is not my place. Their friendship is really cute, though. I swear, whenever these two get together, it's like they're lost in a world all their own. Because I value your opinion, and don't you think Jinx would look cute? I mean, classy in a Raven Scry hat. Mm -hmm. Grace, no hatting without consent. She doesn't want to wear it. Grace, you said no like half a dozen times. Pretty sure that means she doesn't. She's not gonna wear the hat. No cosplay, cosplay without consent. No cosplay without consent. Thank you. Glad you see reason. I wasn't trying to be pushy or anything or cruel. Jinx is the grumpy one. And Grace, yeah, one hundred percent. It's kind of adorable. Okay, I think I'm done shopping for goodies now. Thanks for taking along, you two. My family visited Pangy Paradise once every year or so back when I was a kid. Feels good to be back here and sharing this wonderful place with you both. Besides, if they don't, yeah, right? I'm hoping that's the epilogue we get, is they finally realize that they're in love with each other. I would love that. So it's always interesting to imagine Rogue putting on their robe and wizard hat. I'm sorry, are you putting this on to me now? Old reference, never mind. 
Let's move on. See you around the park later, Rogue. Cool. Bye. Trying to maintain peace. Sorry, my lips are chipped. I fix, I fix. Should probably get out of here before I end up buying that adorable Mr. Movie plushie that's staring at me across from the magic shop. What's gonna trigger this? Something's gonna happen. Okay, listen. Listen. Iris already bullied me into making a decision today. I am clearly still feeling a particular way from that. And I didn't even have, she's like, you can still change your mind before dinner. And I'm like, ma'am, you forced me. You forced my hand. Literally the first. Also. Sorry, OBS is like, OBS is very shoddy with me today and I don't know what it is. Uh, so I apologize if this is a little bit choppy. Or if I start making angry noises and that is typically due to OBS. Um, who are, we love, we love our OBS overlords. We don't have any issues with them whatsoever. Anyways. Um, yeah, no, Iris, Iris is being so pushy today and was like, you should make a decision. And I was like, I don't want it. And so we went with one, but apparently I can still change my mind, which is just rude of her. Okay. This is rude. This is bullying. Actually, you know what? Rather than running around after my friends, I think it's time to take a quick moment for myself. It's pretty warm in here. Despite being an ice-themed wonderland of fun, I could go for something cool and refreshing. This being Pengy Paradise, there's always refreshments within eyesight, so I make my way to a lemonade stand. <laughs> Said to the man, run in the stand. Hey, ba ba ba, got me grapes. Sorry. A duck walked up to the lemonade stand and he said to the man, run in the stand. There we go. That was it. A charging an arm and a leg and a kidney and a lung for this stuff. What am I going to do? We'll leave the park just to get a drink. Fishing enough money to pay for buy an afternoon FOD play out of my pocket. I step up to make my order. Hi, I'd like to get a slushy. Ooh, they have slushies. You know what? I need one of those ice cold babies. Me Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Make that three, please. I'm paying. Thank you. I'm sorry. You're doing what now? With a shrug, the employee behind the refreshment stand slides over th three of my selected beverage. Valkyrie accepts two of them with a wave of her phone and nods a, th a nod of thanks in his general direction. OBS. OBS, I thought we came to an agreement. I thought we were going to be fine. Three drinks paid for. Thank you for using Iris Pay, human. Human? She sets aside her extra drink for now, then takes a long sip of her own slushie before speaking. It's for my niece. She's riding in the madly rotating buccaneer over there. See? Pink hat. Sure enough, an adorable youngster with a bright pink hat waves to us as, as her motorized pirate ship twirls and twirls. Looking forward to facing us at the charity match tomorrow? I have no idea what to say to you, ma'am. You have stolen one of my sponsors. You are kind of the worst. You've threatened me. And not in the way that I make playful, empty threats. This is the woman who stole our sponsor, told me off for being an esports newbie, and has done all she can to stand in our way. All while saying it's for our own good. But I just can't stand here in a daze, so... Actually, I am. She's not being mean to me now, so maybe this is some sort of olive branch. No reason to be rude. I can handle small talk. No matter who wins tomorrow, the tournament's going to be fun and for a charitable cause. So, yeah, I am looking forward to it. In the meantime, I get to actually be here at Pengi Paradise. I have it on good authority that it is the silliest place on earth. Trademark, trademark all rights reserved. No, it's really not. Why are you out here? I'm only here to babysit my niece. I'd rather be back in my hotel catching up on my work. It's a lot. Running an esports organization, it's not all fun and games and friendship like you think. Ma'am, I was trying to be nice. It's what I get for being nice. When you're serious about keeping things professional, you work extra hard. Exactly like I do. So much for pleasantries. You can still learn from my expertise, you know. Step up your game, build a better brand for your business. I, like... 
here's the thing. These guys are real good at writing villains. They're real good at this. Valkyrie pauses as she considers whether or not whether or not she should speak up about something or leave it unsaid. In the end, she shrugs and pushes ahead. Let me offer you some free advice. I know it's too late to back your team out of the show match tomorrow, but you may want to consider distancing yourself a bit. Is that a threat? Let's be perfectly honest. P2W is going to destroy you in front of a very large audience. It's going to be painful. One fluke went over us when we were unprepared is understandable. But two fluke wins? That's not happening. We've had time to study your tactics since then. Ma'am? Kindly no. But you don't need to be humiliated. You personally, I mean. Step back from the fight. Let two of your players take on my team while you stay on the sidelines. Don't be a ground zero when it happens. Everybody will have a good time, we'll raise money for charity, and your own reputation will stay intact. You're the only series player on that team, after all. That's an insult to my team. OBS, I swear to God. OBS, could you please? There we go. We're making sure you're properly updated after this stream. Ugh. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, kindly PFO. Um, we're done with you. I'm trying to help you. Mm. Whether you believe that or not. I've been trying to help all this time. This is an unboxing of Ultimate Fighting Level Trash Shock. Yeah, it really is. Your team won't last after their media spotlight fades. But you could endure it. You could reach your dreams without them. She's now trying to completely, like, debilitate my team. Either so she can take me and, like, have me join her team. Or just because then I wouldn't have a team. One day, you might even join the best of the best. There we go. Team play to win. Feel like I called it. Feel like I called that. But that future only has Don't step up to the plate tomorrow. Don't let their impending failure stain your career. Sound good? More sage wisdom, supposedly. And yet... Punchy78 warned me that her kindness masks her spite. I could call her out on that again, but what's the point? She'd just deny it again. She has a point. We haven't decided which two members of M7 will face off against the two members of Team P2W. Spill your drink on her. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, I'm so sorry. Must be really difficult to get that out of that nice white blouse of yours. I could step back, not to hide in shame, but to let my friends take the spotlight. We beat them once before, right? Maybe they don't need me commanding them from the front line. Maybe they're ready. Hang on. What's that thing called where abusers try to separate their victims from their support systems? Getting big those vibes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what that actual concept is called, but I 100% like in align with that. Because then, truth be told, what she could do is then tell me, like basically say to my team, oh, your manager wasn't supporting you. A real manager would have stepped in for this battle. Uh, what's the best play here? It's uh, called saving. That is, in fact, the best play here. I feel like both of these are bad. You know? <sighs> no, I stand by my team. And I, which means I'm gonna leave the fight. I decided to stand my ground and stand firm. And this feels like, remember that moment where I had the choice to punch Deco Nami? This feels like this moment <laughs> where it doesn't entirely matter because somebody's gonna come through and screw me over in the end. Like, I'm somehow going to get disqualified from being in the match. Like, I just... This definitely feels very similar to that moment. Mm. I don't back down. This is my time to rise. This feels like the punching option. But I also hate the ego-driven aspect of it. 
We're going neutral here. Thanks, but no thanks. See you at the match. I remain stoic, not giving her an inch, not showing any fear or anger or arrogance, just absolute determination. I guess it was too much to hope you'd listen to reason, wasn't it? But hope springs eternal and you can't say I didn't try. Let me be perfectly clear. You're no threat to me. You never have been and you never will be. I don't care what the pathetic clickbait or reporter says. This is not personal. This is not getting under my skin. You're not that important. Oh, am I the reason you're not sleeping at night? Oh, that's so cute. All you are is an arrogant little flea, one I can flick off at any time. So if you won't listen to reason and insist on acting like a pest, you'll be squashed like one. As our conversation comes to an abrupt end, the girl in pink hat runs out towards out the exit from the madly rotating buccaneer, swooping in to scoop up her slushie. I have more concern, important concerns right now. My family comes first. I'll see you at the match tomorrow, personally. Nope, that is not a happy gamer. No way, no how. Betty luck, I brattled her, giving me the edge in the fight tomorrow or made her twice as determined to destroy me, I guess. Time will tell. Afternoon's rolling in as Peggy Paradise chills the hell out a little compared to the morning mayhem. I have a few hours left before the sun goes down and I have to decide if I'm going to swing into romance mode. Why do you make me make these decisions? Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I like to leave my options open. Mostly because I am indecisive. And I've still got time to figure out what direction my heart wants me to wander. So where to wander first? <gasps> Hamza! Hamza is a delight, and I love them so much. Okay, I, I have to, like, start... Okay, so we spent time with everybody today, which is really good. We are going to spend time with Hamza, though. Hang on. I s could swear I saw a swish of a brown cloak just now. Drawn by curiosity, I crisscrossed my way through Pengy Paradise over to the edutainment pavilion, only to find... Aha! A glorious find. Glorious indeed. I love Truly, him. Hamza's collection is growing by leaps and bounds. Hi, sweetie. Yep, it's Hamza, the arcade auction master and tournament host in all his finery. And as usual, playing up his self-chosen role as eccentric rich dude. Looking wildly out of place amidst all the jorts and fanny packs and kids wearing penguin hats, he's overseeing a small work crew moving wooden crates around. Okay, gotta know what's going on here. Uh, Hamza, right? Uh, Greetings. Excellent, excellent. Hamza's day is vastly improved by your spontaneous appearance. Love this man. If you came to enjoy the robots of the future year 1990 exhibit, I'm afraid you're one day too late. Mm. Hamza has purchased the entire lot for his personal archives. My gosh, Hamza. Hamza. Hmm. I, uh, no, I came over here because I was kind of surprised to see you. Ah, even better. Hamza appreciates the appreciated. What a beautiful boy. What's this about robots exactly? Yes, one of the many corporate sponsored science themed attractions of Pengi Paradise. Sadly, most are outstandingly outdated by this point. The corporate masters of this attraction were going to simply throw away all these delightful plastic robots of yesterday. Such an incredible waste. It really would be. No, Hamza will not allow it. Technology of the past must be preserved for future generations to understand and appreciate. As an arcade aficionado, surely you agree. Yes? Of course. I'm really more of a PC history nerd than an arcade history nerd, but I get the idea. Obsolete doesn't automatically mean something's garbage. Since my fat family wasn't particularly rich most of my games growing up were outdated MS-DOS jank like old shareware compilations and stuff but I loved it all the same excellent truly you have taste and class I love this human so what sort of robots were on display at a kitty amusement park I'm guessing they're like those creepy musical animal robots back at your arcade warehouse far from it these are helpful automata designed to interact with and amuse the masses in fact Oh my goodness. Shadow Warrior Freeware anyway. Oh man. Clapping twice for attention, he waves over one of the workers boxing up all these old beige and brown plastic robots. The robot. 
and the workers wheel over a particularly clunky, chunky-looking robot that accidentally wandered over off. That looks like it accidentally wandered off the set of a low-budget 1970s sci-fi movie. Listen, as long as this is not... Oh my goodness. What is the name of it? I don't... Okay, so if anybody's familiar with the Adventure Zone, specifically the Balance Arc, um, and there was the, the testing robot from the Crystal Kingdom uh, chapter, that is what this reminds me of. That's what he reminds me of. Which makes me think he's gonna explode on us. And a voice like... 1970 was, don't, let's not go there. That's scary. That sounds too scary. No. In a voice like a slice and diced audio tape, it greets me. Hello, human friend. I am Robert, your robotic operational body of robotics from the year. Error, get out of grid. <laughs> you know what? This feels accurate suddenly. I am a product of Cooper Technologies, striving every day to make your life bigger, happier, more productive. Would you like to know more? Please subscribe me to Pizza Facts. What? Glorious. Is he not the perfect snapshot of time and what people thought the future would become? Arise from your grave, little robot, live anew! Science fact tends to outpace science fact. Obviously, but definitely still adorable. He's so cute! I love seeing cool old robots. Someone poured a lot of heart into this silly design. Part of me really wishes we had the future I saw in cartoons. Robot friends, flying cards, the works, a robot in every household. Indeed, a virtual paradise. Sadly, we exist in distant future 20-something or other. Corporate dystopia with non-flying cars. But I feel these optimistic visions of the future can yet inform where we may go as people. We can have those chrome dreams if we seek them through further. You might be right about that. Those thoughts are interrupted by a buzzing sound coming from my pocket. Curious to see if someone's calling me, I pull up my phone. Oh, Iris, what's up? You need something? If you don't mind, can I see Robor for myself? I can barely hear what's going on from deep in your pocket. Sh With a shrug, I tilt my camera so Iris can get a better view. In the distant future, robots will be your friends. We will learn from you. You will learn from us. One day, Robor hopes to learn how to feel. Error. Emotional status that a table not loaded. Please take your homework and not bad. No, jeez. I see. And the tiny image of Iris glowing, glowing on my phone looks, my phone screen looks sad. Seeing this awkward and broken yell relic of yesteryear. This is how humans see us. No. Not at all. Those junk. Things. Objects. I see you as an invaluable piece of my life, despite the fact that you bully me into making choices. I'm made by Cooper Technology, too. I'm generations beyond Robor. But we were both made to be helpful. And once we aren't helpful anymore, we get thrown out. Oh no, is she still feeling rough about getting, becoming disabled, like becoming, what was it, them getting rid of her, I suppose? No, that's not, baby, baby. Oh, she, oh geez, I'm so sorry, Iris. I understand. I mean, I was never very good at my job. I was programmed to obsessively push pizza bagels. I couldn't operate at full power unless someone paid hundreds of dollars. Iris, but here's the thing. Those pizza bagels made us very happy. No wonder Cooper Technologies decided to take me off the market. Humans didn't want me. I failed them. I wasn't good enough. I would argue they were scared of you. Um. And I'm just an app, aren't I? They can shut off my service and delete me anytime they want. But I'm not alive. Um, oh god, at least your brain isn't made of magnetic tape now. Don't let anyone tell you what you are and are not. Seems to me like you're relying on outside parties to tell you what you are and are not. I say don't let anyone define you like that. You have free will, even if it's baked into silicon instead of carbon-based meat, so use it. Be yourself, be who you think you should be. I may have been programmed the drive to help people with their problems, but it's a drive I've chosen to embrace. I want to be helpful. And maybe if I'm very helpful, if I prove I'm useful and safe and nothing at all to be scared of. Don't know about that last one. Humans will eventually accept me. Yes, we'll help everyone. And when everyone is happy, we'll be embraced by humanity, right? 
<laughs> Humanity is kind of not good at, well, much of anything, so they could use your help. Mm, follow your dreams, Iris. They'll love you. Sounds good here. Chasing your dreams is a very human thing to do. I'm doing it right now. If you follow your dreams, I'm sure humanity will love you in the end. That They'll see you the way I do. Okay, we'll keep helping humanity more and more. One day, everyone will be helped. Maybe together, we can save the world. And that's when we both look up and realize we just had an entire extremely dangerous conversation right in front of Hamza. Crap baskets. Um, Rogue? Mr. Shul, Hamza has no wish to report you for software piracy. Your discussion shall be kept in confidence. Thank you, Hamza. You're the best. Iris is a being of burning passion, a fierce and true spirit of life. Hamza recognizes this and would never inhibit that rise to glory. Thank you. You're the best. Oh, good. Thank you. Much appreciated. But if Hamza can offer your friend a bit of inside information, shall we say, to ease her worries... Incomplete confidence, of course. Inside information? Hamza! Darling! Yeah, he, he's a bro. He don't snitch. Snitches get stitches. He knows better. Iris, you believe Cooper Technology saw you as flawed and inadequate. And that is why they discarded you. It's not at all it. Yes. I mean, they tried to kill me. If not for our mother and Grace Cooper leaking our code to an anonymous group that set up new servers, we'd be gone. Obviously, they did it because my product line wasn't worth the Um, right? disagree. Strong disagree. Side note, I love when they have the voice actors come in because it means I can just drink some water. On the contrary, the Iris software was quite profitable. Know that I cannot speak as to why I knew this fact. But an outside party forced... Cooper Technologies to drop all support for Iris. Uh, sorry? Come again? Interesting. Huh. The issue is not one of usefulness. The issue is the core technology Iris is built upon. What if it's those suits? The suits would do it because they know that it was based off of Polybius tech. And that's... I wonder. Hmm. Perhaps it's best I keep things vague. Hamza has learned many a dark My god, this game. While exploring the depths of arcane history. No, 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 no vague, no vague. Give us more. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, gimme. Unless you already know of the strange technology I refer to. Yep. If so, I have no doubt you can piece together the rest yourself. Yeah, so it's all relating to the Polybius. Wait, do you mean... 100%. Polybius, Grace told me that Cooper Technologies built Iris on the back of Solutions Tech, the company that made Polybius. She had no idea Iris's personality systems have that weird and extremely dangerous arcade software baked right in. And as for who shut the project down... Call dance! That could only be the one hunting down Polybius, the one I ran back in, ran into back at Max when she tried to hack into my iris. Oh yeah, that happened too yesterday, didn't it? Oh crap, baskets. Indeed. Wait, it was her. She tried to have my sister killed. Hamza suggests we speak no further. This is a public locale, and while the anonymity of the crowd grants us some leeway. It is not a total mask for such subterfuge. Exactly. Right. Good point. The information was merely offered to bolster the spirit of Iris so that she may know she was not discarded like Robo. Indeed, quite the opposite. She was too successful. Accurate. Now, Hamza must depart. The collection of robotic technologies is complete, and he has shipping manifests to fill out. Love this soul. Luck to you in your efforts against Team P2W, my friends. May you bathe in the blood of your enemies. You're a little vengeful there. Love you too, buddy. Goodbye, big sister. Oh, that was cute. Oh, boy. This is a lot to think about. 
I think we'd better be better off focusing on fun at Pangy Paradise today. Deal with any fallout from this later. Seconded. I didn't ask to get wrapped up in some giant techno conspiracy. I just wanted to play video games. But I may need to tell Loxley about this. He's looking for Polybius tech, so he should be told about this development. Assuming he didn't already know and was keeping it from me for my own good, as usual. Right, back to Pangy Paradise, silliest place on earth. Trademark all the rights reserved. Back to my life already in progress. Well, speaking of Loxley, let's go see him and Jinx. Robin Hood and Goth Girlfriend, let's do this. Wait, there we go. We spotted the renter mobility scooter we encouraged her to use today parked outside an arcade. Thankful to be out of the heat, I wander inside to find her. And as per usual, it looks like the crane is pulling something out of my skull. <coughs> oh, gosh. I spot her standing around a bit bored while Loxley happily raids Pengi's Palace stock of crane game prizes. Excellent. These quizzes are, prizes are quite a value. I'm so tempted to blow my entire purse on crane pools and then flip them in online auctions. The weirdest form of investment banking I've ever heard of. Any port in a storm, my friend, in these tough times, one must seek economic advantage wherever there is one found. Hey, prize scouring. He is, I'm not. I'm ugh, not really doing much of anything today. Why not? Plenty of rides around here. Yeah, rides I can't go on. Anything that jostles your spine is dangerous as hell for me. There's the edutainment and world showcase stuff, but uh, it's more Grace's thing, not mine. Too dull. So just hanging around the arcade, poking the retro games, wishing the racer cabs had out of tape shins. Marvelous. And I am keeping our fellow teammate company to raise her spirits. Uh, making a valiant attempt at least. Oh, sorry to hear you can't go on the rides, Jinx. Honestly, not that into rides anyway. Also super boring. Boring? A steel coaster that zips through loops at over 100 miles an hour is boring? It's on a track. There's nothing exciting about that. So you wanted to have a chance to kill you instead? Eh, bad at explaining things. Okay, let me see if I can put it in relative terms. I'm somewhere between Grace and Zapper. Grace likes safe, comfortable experiences, predictable ones. Zapper wants an absolute thrill, diving headfirst into the unknown with no hand on the controls and tense risk is her thing. For me, I want the horizon. <laughs> You're not wrong. Jinx needs something else altogether. Hey, listen, if you didn't say it, I'm surprised the game didn't. I want to see a destination so very clearly, then find a way to get there with optimum speed. My fantasy is one of absolute control and precision. When you master riding the razor's edge by your skill alone, when you're in the zone like that, you can feel you can accomplish anything. A ride isn't like that. A ride has no control to master. A ride is just fake thrills within perfect comfort. So, not my thing. I concur, friend. Well said, well said. An admirable approach to living one's life. I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah, well, idealism's great until you're stuck in an amusement park full of things you can't do and don't enjoy. Shame the arcade's not accessible like good, clean fun. They've got a limited edition of Fast Cars 4 here. I'd love to try, but nope, can't do the pedals. But whatever, don't need to live in perpetual entertainment. Can be bored for a bit and just survive and survive just fine. How about you sit on my lap and I work the pedals? You should protest their lack of disability accommodations. As a public access venue, aren't they required by law to provide disability accommodations? I think you should consider protesting this. And risk annoying the corporation hosting our big event tomorrow? Not gonna hurt the team's prospects. Risk I'm willing to take. You deserve to have fun too. Eh, not interested. Look, I'm all for fighting for my right to party, but I pick and choose those battles and I don't feel like fighting today. Here to have fun, yeah? Besides, I know disability advocates and legal exper experts who can lay the smack down better than I can. I'll ping one of them later about this place, maybe. Sadly, most of these places skate by with letter of the law accommodations rather than spirit of the law. They may already be in legal compliance. If you can't play the game you want to play, how can they be in compliance? Life's complicated. Disabled life, doubly so. Ugh. Well, can we stop talking about my accommodations now? I swear to God, there's more to my life than just being the disabled girl. Problem is, whenever we travel, whenever I'm outside my comfy adapted home, it throws a giant spotlight on these problems. Hate these constant reminders. Jinx, I assure you, none of us see you as a condition rather than a person. We're your friends and allies, and we know... And that we un and that uh, <laughs> and we that understand the struggles you face need not define you. Agreed. Let's table this and just focus on having fun together. Sound good? 
Yeah, definitely. As you like. Very well, perhaps a reminder of our friendship is in doll form is in order. Loxley, oh. Loxley turns back to the crane game. He's been gradually depleting of all value, effortlessly moving the skinny metal hook in place over a penguin dolly. And manages to snag two of them in one grab, the precarious physics of it all resulting in a pair dropping into the prize chute. Here's a plush friend for you, Jinx, and one for Grace. Hmm, that was unusually easy. Good grip strength on this game. Perhaps I should earn a Grace a few more of these, fine keepsakes bring home for our trip together. But his musings seem to have triggered an exasperated reaction from Jinx, who groans with a gentlemanly gesture. Oh yeah, the, the, the cane she has is dope as hell. It's so cool. Come on. Okay, that's it. Just gonna come out and say it, tired of dancing around the issue. Loxley, what are your intentions towards Grace? Yeah, actually, Loxley! Loxley, what are your intentions towards Grace? Pardon, friend? So happy we can move it in this direction. I was merely aiming to find a good, fine gift for a good friend, nothing more. Really? You pulled two dolls out of that machine instead of giving gifts for Jinx and Rogue? No, your instinct is to make them, for gi gi make them gifts for Jinx and Grace. Grace isn't here right now. Rogue is. I do not need a doll. I don't need anything. Not the point. Loxley, you damn well know Grace is my best friend in the world. I won't let anyone break her heart. You know what? Suddenly real glad I'm not going for Grace. I uh, don't want to anger you. Not down for that. So, you, so are you or are you not looking to seduce her with your gifts and flattery and constant praise? I actually feel like he was trying to wingman for you. And like let you bring these gifts to her. Just saying. What? Be real with me. Right here, right now, in front of Rogue, our arbiter of team conflict. Oh, cool. Now I'm being pulled into this. What at long last is the freaking deal with you and Grace? Oh, but he protects. The thing is that he protects the Iris tech. Because he's part of the group that saved it, but hasn't told Grace about it necessarily. He pauses, making sure he's not tossing off some quick dismissive answer. Put serious thought into it. Told you the grumpy and the peppy one were going to end up together. I, yeah, she really is. It's real cute, though, and I'm here for it. I offer my sincere apologies. I have no romantic designs on Miss Cooper. I understand completely how my words may be read that way, however. And I apologize for being vague about your friend. No, my feelings are ones of admiration. Grace has a tendency to dismiss or belittle her own accomplishments. She sees them as mere tinkerings or accidents. But she is a genius. Creating Iris, not that's very near and dear to me. That was a work of absolute genius. Am I protected above her? Absolutely, because this world does not deserve someone with such a gentle heart and intricate mind. The romance? No. If I seem to have a knight's affections, they're meant to be ideals of respect. I seek and desire nothing more than that. However, if you're uncomfortable with my support of her, I will give her distance. I don't want to jeopardize our friendship. Would that be acceptable? Hmm. <sighs> Sensible, but Rogue, want to weigh in here? What do you think? Why me? There's genuine strength in his words. I can usually tell when someone's playing me, but he's speaking true. He's not interested in wooing Grace to his side. But what Jinx doesn't know is that Loxley is working for some mysterious group to secure a murderous arcade game called Polybius. And Iris, created by Grace, is built on the back of the Polybius Code. Hamza told me that all this is connected. Cooper Technologies, Iris, Polybius. Is there more going on here than Loxley has led on even to me? This is the real reason why I need to smooch and swoo and swoo. Woo. Smooch and woo Loxley because, like, I need to know. If I call Loxley to the carpet on his side hustle right when Jinx is suspecting him, it's going to rattle the team just before a major event. And even aside from that, I can tell he's being real when he says he's not romantically interested in Grace. He's not lying. Do I want to quietly encourage Jinx's suspicion or back, lo back in Loxley? I think, he's telling the tr I think he's telling the truth. Besides, if he still upset a line, you can beat him with your cane. He's telling the truth. We've got a nose for liars and he doesn't stink of being a two-faced rat. Besides, if he does act like a vaudevillian villain towards... Vaudeville villain, vaudeville, pfft, vaudeville villain, try saying that 10 times fast, towards Grace, you'll be right there, I'll be, you'll be right there to beat his ass to death with your cane. Indeed, a beating I would accept profoundly and gracefully, 
Should I be found a lowly Oathbreaker, I deserve nothing less. In fact, I know an amateur swordsmith who can make you a fine hidden rapier for your walking cane, Miss Jinx. Yes, give her a sword! Not in the mood to jail to go not in the mood to go to jail for first degree murder. Just keep your hands to yourself and we're good. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay. He don't up to having skeevy and apologize. That goes a long way in my book. Don't gaslight me, claiming I was imagining it all. Didn't gaslight me, claiming I was imagining it all. So we're good? Good. We're good. Also, this arcade sucks and I'm bored. Let's go. You can prove your devotion by getting me a hot dog. As you like, Lady Jinx, coming along. I have got more on my plate right now. Dinner can wait. Have fun. Even if Loxley's not making moves on Grace, he's making some kind of moves in the dark. And I want to know what they are. He wants to protect me and protect all of M7. And I'd hazard very specifically wants to protect Grace from this polybius nonsense. But I'm still having those nightmares of that digital smile every night. Ugh, push this down. Deal with it another time. Pangy Paradise awaits. All right, Uno Mas. We're going to do one more. And then we might call it there for the night and leave the date and tournament to the next episode. Um, while I would love to continue to, like, just play for another three hours straight, I'm going to, I'm not going to press my luck with how tech has been loving me today. Um, I'm going to go for these two. The day has already been filled to the brim with excitement, fun, and overly cute penguins. It's only half over. So it's a little bit of a surprise when I see Domino and Rhapsody heading against the massive crowds towards the entrance. It's way too early to leave the park. Maybe they know something I don't, like a super secret Pengi event. At least they're unhurried in their stride, so it's easy for me to catch up with them. Leaving so soon and had enough silly for one day? Hey. <laughs> yes, I'm officially overdosed on silly. Uh, I seek a mere respite from the silly. Oh, there'll be plenty more good times ahead tonight, I hope. I sure hope so, too. Ideally, there's a few things I wanted to check on um, before tomorrow's big match with P2W. Switch it up. I'm looking at player stats and strategies, writing down tips for everyone, and that kind of research, and I won't have time for it later. So I'm heading back to the hotel for a midday siesta. Ditto, I could use a retreat myself. It's the busiest time at the park, and the crowds are overwhelming. Too many bodies, too many children, too much stimulation. A nice break to clear your head is the perfect way to recharge those batteries. Rogue, would you like to join us? As much as a break sounds welcoming, I have a list of things I want to get done and not all of them are checked off yet. How about escorting us to the entrance instead? It'd mean a lot to me if you did. Having someone you trust on hand for emotional support. Of course I'll be your emotional support. I joke frequently at work that I... All I actually want to be at work is emotional support. I don't want to do anything else. Actually, that's a lie. I like working on certain things. But I love being, I, I joke a lot of the time that I'm like, no, 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 I'm just here for emotional support. That's all I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it's good times. It's all I want. Having somebody you trust on hand for emotional support when you're feeling antsy is nice, you know? Nothing would make me happier. Plus, there are a couple of shops near the entrance I wanted to check out. Uh, they pile all the fancy shops near the gates to maximize the amount of money people spend. Please exit through the gift shop, consumer peons. The same idea with the snacks at checkout in the grocery store. Impulse buys. We can't. We just can't leave without our seven seven hundredth pengi themed item, can we? Oh, we can and we will. I shall resist the temptation. As we stroll towards our destination, the crowds are getting thicker, coming right at us. I feel like a salmon swimming upstream. Without the egg laying and death right after. Like Domino mentioned, there are a lot of restaurants, gift shops, clothing stores, anything and everything you can think of. As our attention is focused on the various boutiques, we hear some ruckus in the distance and our ears suddenly perk up. Wait, are those drums? And trumpets. And the Pengi theme. Everyone knows the Pengi theme. Or if they didn't, they'd know about it after spending five minutes here. And I can't help but sing along. This feels so close and yet still slightly off to something else. I'm not singing this, by the way. While we look for the oncoming sounds, Rhapsody takes out their phone to check something. It's time for the 3 p.m. Pengi parade through Iceland streets. And it's right on time. Oh, it's 100% going to be a parade. Before we can appropriately react, children are shouting and congealing into blobs on the main thoroughfare. We're surrounded on all sides by people singing, clapping, and taking pictures. Nair an escape in sight. Colorful balloons, smiling youths, upbeat, family friendly music, the pain, the pain! We'll never make it to the exit at this rate. We'll be stuck here forever. Our minds will crack. We'll be locked into a mascot costume, brainwashed, and forced to dance forever. There's got to be something we can do. 
I know, quick lift domino above your head. <laughs> uh, we'll find an alternate route. We can't go forward, so we go backwards. I'm sure we can find an alternate way around the parade. Great thinking. Maybe we can double back and walk through this section of the park. There has to be more than one way to leave this place, right? That's assuming the mesmerized masses will let us through, and that's looking less and less likely. Domino's right. There are people surrounding us, trapping us in. We can't even take a single step back. I make an effort, but I'm just bumped into place. There's nothing we can do to stop the onslaught of floats, dancing people in loud costumes, marching bands. We just have to sit tight and watch it all go by. Maybe it's a good thing we're trapped here, otherwise we might have gotten trampled by any numerous things around us. What a way to go, dying in the silliest place on Earth. Trademark all rights reserved. Do you know that there have been over 30 deaths at Pengi's Paradise since its opening in 1970? I'm sorry, what? Of course, all of them were harmed or caused by people not following the rules or kids hiding until the park closes and swimming in the Pengi Pond knowingly when they can't swim. Huh? Really, if an accident... I can understand if an accident happens every once in a blue moon, but 30 seems like too many. Yeah, wouldn't we have heard about it? Oh, but Pig Penguin doesn't want you to know about it. I've been covering up just this park for years. They pay off families, can't have a few bad eggs, tarnish the name of the most powerful fowl. Otherwise, no one would show up. It would be deemed unsafe. How would they make their billions? Are you sure those aren't just, like, urban legends scaring children into behaving? My parents told me stories like that when I was little. No one would really stand up in the middle of the ride and get decapitated, right? There's a reason the Darwin Awards exist. Honestly, I'm not surprised. People are always pushing their limits doing stupid stuff to show off. So we have the Darwin Awards. Nothing, can, nothing like getting a shiny trophy that lets, that lets your life be an example to others. People can't be stopped, even with every warning around them. Mind the gap doesn't apply when someone thinks they're invisible. Invincible. I don't want to believe that. Rogue, you should ask your iris to look into it. I nod, pulling out my phone, and I call upon my pink personal assistant. Hey, Iris, I need you to research something for me. Iris, online. Of course, what do you need to know? How many foods can, how many rides can you ride at Pengy Paradise? The best foods to eat in the park? Oh, how about a top 10 list of the top 10 things people look up about Pengy Paradise? I was wondering how many deaths have happened here. Ooh, spoopy. Nice choice. Searching. My sources say yes. It seems as though there have been a total of 48 deaths. I had to search through police records, newspapers, and a few blogs to compile the number. Not an easy search, though. The information doesn't really want to be free. See, can't trust corporations that aim to please people. What's outwardly overly happy and joyous always... What's outwardly overly happy and joyous always has a dark history and hides its secrets. Hooray! True! In fact, the most gruesome death was a teenager who got slowly crushed to death on the Happy Penguin Dance Ride. He jumped out of the cart, but his pant leg got stuck between the rail and the car, sucking him under and pulverizing him. Our awkward silence mixes with the quiet of the last float passing by us, and the music fades into the distance. Thank goodness that parade is over, huh? With the slow-moving street show done, the crowds thin out as everyone returns their normal actions. We're just left to question our experience. Well, I for one am glad we had this conversation. Shall we depart? I'm in favor of going, and quickly, that parade comes to some serious prop time. Let's go. Before we get caught up in anything else, the three of us start for the exit, and in no time we make it. All right, I'll catch up with you both of you later tonight after things chill the heck out a bit. And I have sufficient time to take that horrible de little pile of facts and lock in a small box buried deep within my psyche forever and ever and ever. I leave goodbye to Rhapsody and Domino as they pass through the turnstile. Immediately, I don't feel like perusing the shops much anymore, so I watch until I can no longer see them. Nighttime in Pangy Paradise. By this point, the rowdy kids and large families have retired to various hotels in the area. The park's much quieter now. Okay. I feel like we're about to hit the, uh, the moment. A.K.A. another decision moment. Mm, no, we're gonna start a new page. I just have 20 million saves for this game. It's fine. Um. I think that's where we're gonna leave it. Uh, just because I feel like we're about to make some decisions that we can't turn back from. And you know what? I'm not ready for more decisions. I was already bullied into this. So anyways, um, we're going to leave it there for tonight. I will not be streaming on Thursday. Uh, this is another case in point of blame work. I unfortunately have an after work engagement I need to attend. Uh, trust me, I would much rather be here streaming. 
but that's a whole other story. Um, but that's okay. On Saturday, I will be streaming over on the Women in Games Twitch. Um, I think it's twitch.tv forward slash W-I-J, no, W-I-G-J is actually, I think what it is. Um, follow my Twitter. My Twitter will actually have it proper. Uh, I will not, however, be online. I apologize for our UK friends, uh, but because it's organized by UK folk, uh, I, or people who are in Europe, really, uh, it basically is meant that because I am an Eastern time zone person, I'm doing the late night shift so that way they can, you know, sleep. Uh, so I will not be streaming until, what is it? Yeah, it should be that. I'll double check it. Apparently it used to be Women in Game Jobs and that was where it started, but anyways. Um, but we'll be streaming there, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern till 1 a.m. Eastern. And we're gonna be playing horror games. It's all for charity. It's all for the Ukraine, for, it's to raise money for, uh, Ukraine, efforts in Ukraine. There are over 400, thank you, over 400 games being given away that day. The stream actually starts at 12 o'clock BST and goes until 12 p.m. BST the next day. And so, yeah, please check it out. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to double check that link. But I'm like 90% certain that's the one. Women in Games. Yes, it is. That is exactly it. So that is where I'll be on Saturday night. Uh, and then, like a crazy person, I'm going to be streaming on Huntsman's Hydra, as you've seen in my chat bot. On Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we're back for another game of Fire in the Dark. Super excited. Uh, so it's a weekend of streaming. So we'll be picking this game back up on Monday, usual time, 5 p.m. Eastern. But yeah. Anyways, thank you all so much for being here. Is there anybody for me to send? Send to not my usuals. Okay, that's okay. Anyways, we'll leave it there for tonight. Have a wonderful night. Take care of yourselves, drink some water, eat some food. I'm gonna go eat some food. I'm actually starving. And we'll see you later. A bye. Thank you for putting up with my tech issues. Alright. Bye.